we do have some interesting decisions to make in, well, a number of areas, but the bomber fleet, you know, the, the, as I've told a number of people, one of the most encouraging things that I've heard uh, in, in quite a while when it comes to defense programs is where the B-21 is at. Um, you know, it's, it's under budget, it's performing as expected, and it's moving forward, and we've learned a lot of lessons. It's, it's one of the more successful to date, knock on wood, we've got a ways to go here, um, large ticket item programs that we've had in a long time. So I, I'm pleased we're moving in the right direction on that. I know the Air Force has some tough decisions to make uh, in terms of what to do with existing platforms. We're going to rely heavily on the B-52 and what role the B-1 plays going forward is, is a matter of, of debate. So I appreciate getting your perspectives on that. And we will work to, to try and um, come up with the right decisions. So, so thank you. Um, uh, well, I'll take one more person. If you'd hold on for just a second, uh, Mr. Arrington, I just violated the rules there because I was stalling uh, to give um, San, Mr. San Nicholas time to get on. Um, so Mr. San Nicholas is recognized for five minutes, and when he is done, we will then I'll then open up to questions for him and Mr. Arrington. Uh, Mr. San Nicholas, you are recognized. Deeply appreciate, Mr. Chairman, the um, the efforts to uh, um, facilitate our participation. It is um, about um, 1:42 a.m. here on Guam. So I thank you so much, and I thank the committee for their um, for their kindness. Uh, Chairman Smith, Ranking Member Rogers, and members of the Distinguished House on Services Committee, thank you for the opportunity to testify on our priorities for Guam and the Indo-Pacific region in the development of the Chairman's Mark for the National Defense Authorization Act, fiscal year 2022. As a matter of national policy, in reviewing the hiring practices and policies of the Department of Defense of the ongoing Marine relocation to Guam. It is apparent that there is an opportunity to further align community stakeholder interests on Guam and throughout the country with DOD mission. Key to such alignment is the direct availability of jobs in the communities in which DOD operates when and if such jobs become available. With current hiring practices, filtering job offerings and applicants for preference based on specific status categories, such as DOD employment, veteran status, spousal status, priority placement, et cetera, it would be worthwhile to further filter these categories based on community proximity, such as DOD veteran or spouse within commuting area, or veteran DOD, DOD member veteran or spouse within state or territory. Such emphasis will ensure geographic preference is part of specific and general considerations, making communities within proximity of DOD hiring opportunities direct beneficiaries and strengthening stakeholder relationships. This, Mr. Chairman, would be particularly timely during this need for us to be able to ensure that communities uh, are able to recover as quickly from our pandemic circumstances as possible uh, by allowing for there to be a community um, preference consideration uh, based on proximity, whether it's by commuting area or by state or territory, geographic location, or both, um, we can really, really help the communities in which DOD operates. In continuing with our priority to align national defense interests with specific requests for Guam, we ask that this committee also continue to make strides and support Indo-PACOM's request for a substantial on Miss Guam missile defense system that will protect our people, military intelligence, and defense assets located on and around the island. The need for the Aegis Ashore system is critical to the defense of our nation in a progressively aggressive region. We need to do more to ensure that attacks or threats of attack from our adversaries are mitigated and ameliorated by the presence and potential use of greater response. As noted by Admiral Davidson, the current use of the terminal high altitude air defense system to protect Guam is not sufficient to address threats posed by China. With, with all of the investments that we are making on Guam for the interests of the country, the region, national defense, it's, it's uh, imperative that we do not miss the opportunity to strengthen the defense capabilities with an Aegis Ashore system. Regionally, we are also concerned about communication um, capabilities facing unique threats with reports of deteriorating relations of China in the region suggesting that the DOD should take critical steps to secure American information technology assets. We understand that DOD has been addressing this through military specific initiatives, such as the mission partner environment with loss of protected status for information um, infrastructure in Hong Kong. We face serious threats to our commercial communications and information capacity. The MPE alone may not be sufficient to meet military and civilian needs. 
We ask that you include language to require DOD to report on activities it is taking to ensure the security of our critical communication links and explain how it plans to utilize dual use communication services, such as commercially operated data centers on Guam and other commercial operations that would be of vital um, use to Department of Defense initiatives um, when and if those, those needs arise. Uh, and lastly, Mr. Chairman, we do like, we would, we would like for the um, committee to also initiate another study on whether or not there would be a value added um, proposition to whether to um, uh, enhancing our Guam Air National Guard capabilities to include uh, aircraft and flying missions. We are one of only three National Guards in the country, Air National Guards, that do not have um, that capability. And for us to be the uh, front line uh, towards our um, uh, potential adversaries on, to the east, uh, I think that this would be something worthwhile to study. Uh, that way we can help augment the mission of our active duty and Air Force Base operations. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you again for your consideration and for your facilitation, and I yield back. Do we have any questions for our last uh, three, uh, well, witnesses is the wrong way, the last three members who testified? I don't have any questions. Mr. Rogers, do you have anything? Mr. Rogers, you're recognized. Yeah, thank you. I wanted to Mr. Nicholas know that I wholeheartedly agree with the request for the short site at Guam uh, that that is inadequate. And uh, this is, should be one of our highest priorities to protect what we know is an early target uh, from any attack. Uh, so I feel very strongly about trying to help them with that, as well as Mr. Case with his radar discrimination. Uh, we, we have to recognize those are vital targets. I'm really interested in learning more of uh, Mr. San Nicholas about uh, some some uh, missions for your Air National Guard. So if you'll catch me on the floor sometime or whatever, fill me in on what you have in mind. And with regard to Mr. Sherman, uh, I, I would like it if our committee did have authority or jurisdiction over the UMF. I think we should, but unfortunately, that's foreign affairs. Uh, but with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Uh, uh, Mr. Sherman, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I think this provision will, will uh, the parliamentarian will let it in the NDA, so thank you. Well, we, we've long had that, that battle. I know we're actually working with the bipartisan group of members on both armed services and foreign affairs um, that are interested in the AUMF. It's a very sticky wicket. Um, in, in principle, you know, certainly Congress should reassert uh, more authority, uh, but there's considerable disagreement on how to express that authority uh, between those who want to rein the president in more um, and those who are worried about reining him in too far. Um, threading that needle is something I've on and off worked on uh, over the course of the last 10 years, um, obviously without success. Um, we've stuck with the status quo just because we can't come to agreement on how to change it. Um, I know there are a lot of members who are really focused on figuring that out um, and we'll, you know, I, I applaud those efforts, and we'll see how they play out. And I'm certainly in, in conversations with Chairman Meeks um, on foreign affairs about how he wishes to handle it. I know the Foreign Affairs Committee is, is pursuing options um, at the moment as well. Um, and on, on the missile defense front, you know, Guam is, is a fundamental question. That certainly that is the top priority that Admiral Davidson has put in front of us every year on Indo-PACOM, um, is coming up with a better defense system for Guam. It is certainly his top priority in the region, uh, so that has gotten our attention, and uh, we will consider that request. And as, as I, I said to your, your predecessor, Ms. Bordaglio, whenever we were working on these, wor work on the Senate. Um, you know, the, 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 the Senate has always been a challenge when, when, when it comes to Guam for a variety of different reasons. So we need some Senate allies. So when Mr. Rogers and I get in, get into conference, um, we, we have some friends on the Senate side to back up the requests from Guam. So appreciate your work. Um, does anyone else have any questions, uh, for these members? Yeah, law chair. This is Kai and I have a question for Rep. San Nicholas. Please go ahead. Well, thanks so much. And half a day, Rep. San Nicholas. I know it's early there in Guam. Um, the chair, uh, having just spent about four hours at Indo PACOM yesterday, I can also assure you that uh, the new Indo PACOM commander, Admiral Aguilino, uh, his uh, um, top priorities as well are uh, Guam and the defense of Guam. And um, uh, 
obviously uh, that is not um, suitable or capable for the um, increasing emerging threats from both China and or North Korea and their uh, intermediate range ballistic missiles. I, I think my question, I have two questions. One, kind of piggybacking off the ranking members uh, previous question to Congressman Case about the Homeland Defense Radar Hawaii is uh, the first one would be, is there public uh, support um, for Aegis Ashore on Guam uh, in, the, the, in, in terms of citing Aegis Ashore there? And then my second question would be also along the lines of the Air National Guard um, uh, adding a flying platform there. Do you have um, any, uh, is there any um, uh, sentiment on, are we talking fighters, bombers, tankers, uh, mobility aircraft? Um, has there been any discussions on uh, what type of Air National Guard platform would be a, a single aircraft or a flying wing? Any thoughts along those lines or how we should proceed forward with that? Thank you. Thank you and aloha and very much appreciate the support that we get from our, our Hawaiian brothers and sisters. Uh, as for the um, public support for Aegis Ashore, unequivocally, yes, there is public support for it. Um, our community has had to deal with um, uh, North Korea, even just you know making uh, empty threats, but those still having um, uh, psychological impacts, not only in the community, but also on our visitor industry. And so having those assets on the ground here would, of course, protect our, our mission, our DOD um, uh, investments, our military personnel, the Americans living on Guam, but it would also be um, very psychologically reassuring and it would um, it would take off the table the ability for um, uh, uh, a closed in adversary like North Korea from just being able to spew a few words and economically impact American interests uh, in terms of the economy here on Guam. So absolutely unequivocally, yes, we would like uh, Aegis Ashore, and there is public support for it. Um, to your second question about the flying mission for Guam, uh, my Guam Air National Guard just wants to be a part of the solution. And they want to be able to um, build the modalities necessary for them to uh, expand into whatever the DOD ultimately determines would be in the best interest of the country. So if it goes all the way to a fighter mission, they will be ready. They will be ready to grow into that. Um, if, it, if it's just to start out with um, uh, initial uh, flight based modalities, um, a single aircraft. They will be willing to accept that just to get their foot in the door. Um, they know that in order for us to be able to uh, contribute to the mission, uh, we need to, of course, develop the skill sets. And if de developing those skill sets means just some initial basic uh, air mission uh, capability, we will accept that and grow into whatever DOD needs, needs us to grow into. Great. Thank you for that. And then, you know, perhaps there may be. Um, things to learn from the Hawaii Air National Guard is, is uh, flying wing. Uh, you know, we have F-22, C-17s, KC-135s, and there might be some uh, coordination that the Guam Air National Guard can do with the Hawaii Air National Guard. And I couldn't agree more. Guam is uh, absolutely critical to our national defense in the Pacific. And, you know, I just want to mahalo um, Representative San Nicholas and the people uh, of Guam who, um, you know, uh, allow our United States military to have very, very robust operations on the island of Guam and are continuing to do that as we move Marines over from uh, Okinawa. Uh, there's, there's a lot that uh, the people of Guam have, uh, um, you know, welcomed the United States military with. Uh, and so thank you so much, Rep. San Nicholas and Aloha.